So it seems like every zombies YouTuber and their mother has a ranking every zombies map video on their channel. So I'm finally doing mine. However, I'm doing it only Treyarch maps as there are some non Treyarch maps that I haven't got around to actually playing yet. So until I have experienced them fully, or at least given them a proper playthrough. I don't want to include them on a tier list or a ranking video of any kind because I just think it would be unfair. Now I actually have some criteria for this ranking video. Essentially the three main things are going to be replayability, high round potential and if I can enjoy it on solo. All three sort of linked together. But yeah, without further ado, let's get into the ranking video. Yeah, starting out with number 42, because there are 42 bloody maps. You're not really going to be surprised by this. Maybe you are, but it's Terra Maledicta. Now, the single reason why I put this map below Duran Fang is at least Duran Fang has the Shino Numa round based mode that you can go into. I know it's pretty shit. I know it's literally like three rounds or whatever, and then you get sent back. Also, the world's longest teleport animations, apparently. What in the living hell is this? Like, you know, I'll be honest, some of the aesthetics of Vanguard Zombies is pretty cool. The actual gunplay as well, it's not bad. Like, those are the best parts of the game, but <laughs> I don't know. The entire map is just a bit of a joke, to be honest. Oh, they're just automatically... What? Did, what? Oh, they're taking it, I guess. Oh, okay. Uh, I don't know what's going on. And then my number 41, of course, is Duran Fang. It has the round base portion of Shino Numa for a few rounds, but it's just not very good. The entirety of Vanguard Zombies was a letdown, mainly because like the objective based mode. And it's not even that. It's the fact that they advertised it to be very similar to what Cold War Zombies was. And then we got it and we saw this like strange, like what is going on, dude? Purge, sacrifice, blitz, you know? It's not like this game was cheap. If the game was advertised to like showcase what the mode actually was a little bit better, then it'd be fine. No one would buy it, but at the same time, like, at least you're not misleading the customers. And then at the number 40 spot, I have the Archon, another Vanguard Zombies map, obviously. Quite literally a remake of Terra Maledicta, except at least it's round based and it has a pretty decent-ish Easter egg. I mean, not really. It has a boss fight, which is actually like kind of difficult, but not really. The reason I don't put this any higher as a round based map compared to maps that don't even have Easter eggs is just the fact that it is literally a remake of a fucking map that exists on the same game. Like there's been remasters before and it's like, oh, it's fine, dude. But it's not like Derizon Drog remastered came out on Black Ops 3. Like who asked for that, you know? No one wants to have a remaster of a game that came out like, you know, a few months ago when this released. And to be fair, like if it was Derizon Drog, at least the original map would be a good one to remaster. At number 39 though, I have Bus Depot Survival. Definitely the worst of the Black Ops 2 survival maps. You know, I am a lover of the survival maps, not gonna lie. They're all, it's like cool concepts and I wish the COD Zombies would bring it back. And it kind of has with non treyarch games like World War II, which kind of brought back survival maps for like beaten Easter eggs and stuff, which I appreciated that, but this one is just too bare bones. There's no perks, there's no packet punch, but there is a mystery box. Like that's literally all you get. So sure, you can get the ray gun mark two in the ray gun. Not having perks or packet punch means you die in two hits and the game is just done. It's an interesting challenge as a map. Like you can't really camp because of the explosive zombies. Like when they go on fire, they just make it really, really difficult for you to deal with. But yeah, it's just a little bit too bare bones for me. And that's it for this map. At number 38, I went with Dive Rise. It's just a not very fun experience. Sure, the Wonder Weapon's very nice and easy to get, but at the same time, like, where is the fun is the question I want to ask. Skybox is pretty damn good, and I'm looking forward to the remaster, but they added in these weird armored zombies that mean you can't even one-hit knife them on round one, which is just a joke. The Easter egg, obviously, it requires four players, like a lot of BO2 zombies maps and zombies maps previously, to be fair, but... The only interesting thing on this map is the trample steam and like, you know, other than the fact that you can hop from building to building, which is kind of cool, everything is just waiting for elevators and like that's the gameplay. So yeah, that's why Dive Rise is all the way down here. At number 37, I have Nectar and Toten. Now, you know, I understand it was the very first Zombies map. It's iconic, but just because it's iconic doesn't mean that it's like a godly map or it's even fun. I mean, waiting on round one literally takes Longer than most round 10s do, because they just take so long to spawn in, it's a joke. After beating the World at War campaign and not having any idea what Zombies was, at the time it was extremely creepy and cool, but I feel like they should have just made it so that the zombies spawn in faster on round 1 if you're not playing the version that is when you beat the campaign. Because most people who are just loading into the map themselves want to actually get on and play the map. 
But like Bus Depot, there's no perks, there's no Pack-a-Punch, but it has a bit more personality and more life to it than Bus Depot does, and like, you know, it doesn't have the fire zombies either. So that's why it's above Bus Depot. And I put it above Die Rise because frankly, like, Die Rise is too off-putting with the elevator system. Like at least Nectar and Totem, you can load in and just kind of enjoy the zombies experience. You spin the blocks, you do what you want to do. You don't have to deal with fire zombies. You don't have to deal with waiting around 20 minutes for elevators. It's just the core gameplay experience that you're looking for, really. Next up on the list, we have Farm Survival. Aesthetically, I'm not going to lie, it's really, really cool, especially when you turn off the fog and just appreciate the map. The third best survival map on this game, and unlike Bus Depot and Nectar and Toten, you actually have perks that you can purchase, which is the reason why I put it above both of those maps. It also has things like the Galvan Knuckles, the Reagan and the Reagan Mark II in the mystery box, of course. And you have a little bit of space to actually train here, which I appreciate. Also, the time of the map releasing, Walking Dead was like a brand new show at that time. And I mean, season two was literally featuring in a farm. So it holds that nostalgic factor for me because it's just quite creepy. You know, I, I really do like how it looks, you know, with, with these weird foggy glitch things, because obviously these have just been artificially added in. You can't turn these ones off. But the random lava placement in like almost a moat around the, the farm itself how quiet it is, but you can still hear the odd, like, bird chirping. God knows how they're still alive, considering the apocalypse. But yeah, even though it's this low, I definitely don't dislike farm. It just doesn't have enough going for it. At number 35, we have Shinonuma from World at War. The Wonder Wolf on this map was definitely, like, a welcome presence, and at least there's an actual wonder weapon on such a small map. It also has a bit more room to train than farm and bus depot, as well as Nectar and Toten. The Hellhound round being introduced as well meant that going for higher rounds is a little bit more enjoyable and easier, but the lack of Pack-a-Punch and the sort of really gloomy look to the map doesn't do it many favours. Of course, this game came out a very long time ago, like 2008, so it makes sense. But yeah, by today's standards, it really doesn't hold up too well in terms of the replayability that you're looking for when playing zombies. So yeah, that's why this is at number 35. So if you notice the pattern in these rankings, and you'll understand why I put Kino de Toten at rank 34. Progressively, the maps in my list get less and less simple. But it's not even just about it being simple, it's about it lacking the core functions that make the map fun. But Kino de Toten does have Pack-a-Punch, that is why I put it at the number 34 spot. It also added in the Thunder Gun, which is one of the most iconic wonder weapons of all time, you know? But the reason I put it so low is because I frankly think it's the single most overrated map in all of COD Zombies history. It's nice, but it's on the Black Ops 1 engine, so it feels a little bit smoother to play than World at War. But I'm just so tired of it. The reason that it does feel so, like, just bland and there's not really anything game-changing different is because it was supposed to be DLT for the World at War, but obviously they postponed it and released it with Black Ops 1 as the launch map. I mean, it also came with 5, which is much higher up on this list solely because it has more identity to it. Kino just feels like a very generic map. It does what it does, and it does it quite well. And that's not me faulting it for that. It's just for me personally, it doesn't have enough to warrant me actually wanting to keep on playing this map over and over and over again. Now, I know what you're thinking. How in the ever-living hell is Alpha Omega higher than all the previous maps? And I'll tell you how. One, it has a main Easter egg, so instantly you have more reason to replay the map. Two, it's on Black Ops 4, meaning that you have more just ways to play the game. You've got specialists, you've got custom grenade, loadouts, etc. And three, and this is kind of like the main one, is you can actually get to round 100 in a, you know, I wouldn't say fun way, but it's more fun than any of the previous maps in order to get to round 100. And by fun, I literally mean you sit there and you knife constantly until round 100 and that's it. You don't even need to pack a punch the ballistic knife, you use it, and that's pretty much how the map goes in order to get to round 100. But I personally find that more fun than training on the Kino stage with the Thunder Gun for, god, like 10 hours? Because at least on Alpha Omega, I'm pretty sure it takes a lot less time. I think it's like 6 hours, which by no means is that quick, but by around 100 standards, it's faster than most. And at least they did a good job of, like, saturating BO4. I mean, it looks pretty nice. So, I mean, you've got that going for you, at least. But, yeah, gameplay-wise, the actual map itself, I'm not going to lie, it's pretty doo-doo. That's why it is so low on this list, because as a general map, like, just playing casually, you will not have fun on this map. But if you want to just go for round 100 just to say that you completed it, 
or if you do want to do the Easter egg, then at least you have something to go for, unlike the previous maps. Now, the name of this map should be a bit of a giveaway to how I feel about it, but Voyage of Despair. I put it higher than Alpha Omega because it actually has some gameplay to it. But similar to the next ranking on this list, it's just the corridors are too tight. I understand you have that area underground where you can like teleport to or whatever, and it's got like a semi-decent training spot, but not really. Not only that, but there are some really just like wacky Easter egg steps. It's pretty difficult as well, which I'm not opposed to difficulty in Easter eggs, but they really needed to tone it down, especially for that one step with the planets. The boss fight as well being one of the hardest of all time, you know, I, I'm fine with justifying a hard boss fight because it is the end of an easter egg, it should be challenging. But the reason I put it higher than everything previously on the list is I actually played it a little bit more just to like learn the locations of stuff, give it a chance, and it's, it's definitely an okay map. It's not awful. And some of the side quest easter eggs things that have been like found out in the last year or so, are pretty cool. Like you got the flying rail car thing with the skeleton, which is just dope. You got a way to get three homunculus and the Kraken Wonder Weapon by almost doing like a cheat code thing where you crouch down in that one room and just like sort of walk across. Stuff like that I can appreciate because BO4, unlike World at War and Black Ops 1, the reason I put it higher than some of these maps, even though I might enjoy playing them casually more, is because everything on BO4 pretty much has more content. There is more to do. Whether you find that fun or not is like up to you, but there are so many tiny little side quests that you can go for in this game. But next up on the list, we have Shangri-La. Aesthetically, I think it's one of the most beautiful maps like in all of COD Zombies history. But the reason that I put it so low is, similar to Voyage of Despair, there are too many tight corridors, it really, it's just not a good layout for a zombies map, when the core gameplay mechanic is making sure that you have plenty of distance between you and the zombies, like how are you supposed to do that when you've got such thin like areas like here? The easter egg on this map is really really cool, but unfortunately you can only do it four players. But the reason I put it higher than Voyage is because the Napalm, the Sharika, and the Wonder Weapon are all, frankly, much, much better. Voyage and BO4 in general has special zombies. They're like elemental zombies, mini versions of the Napalm and the Sharika and stuff like that. But they just don't do them as good as BO1 did. Because personally, I think the Napalm and the Shrieker are pretty balanced for the map, and they actually make it really fun and enjoyable to play. The way that you can use the Napalm fire to actually kill the zombies, create some interesting high round strategies and stuff. Like, I would, you know, I'd much rather play this map than something like Kino de Toten, that's for sure. But that's not to say that I necessarily really enjoy it. Now, jumping immediately back into Black Ops 4 zombies, we actually have Blood of the Dead at the number 30 spot. I want to put this map higher, but I just, I can't, dude. The Magma Gat is pretty cool, and frankly, if it wasn't for the amazing ending cutscene on this map, I would have put it like 10 spots lower. The ending cutscene, I mean, it made like 90% of Zombies YouTubers cry. If you didn't cry at the Blood of the Dead ending, you're probably coping. Or at least get a little bit emotional, man. I mean, come on, dude. That, it was so well written. Infinitely made up for everything that this map just fails to do. It's Mob of the Dead remade, but remade really badly. It doesn't feel like Mob of the Dead at all. It doesn't even have the bridge. It was so overhyped and just such a letdown when it released. The Easter egg is by far the single hardest out of any COD Zombies map, with not just like one, but I'm talking like three or four steps that are considered some of the hardest of all time. The one with the ghost where you have to like do the switches. Oh my God, bro. No, just no. I will one day probably attempt this Easter egg and I'm going to absolutely lose my mind, but... That's for another day, dude. But like I said earlier, the Magma Gat, like, there are at least fun ways that you can get to round 100, and once you learn the map quite well, it's not bad. It, like, it's just, it's very passable. As its own map experience, completely unrelated to Mob of the Dead, it's not bad at all. But that's the problem, because everyone expected it to be a masterpiece when it released. And it just was not. It did not fill that role. And I mean, most casual zombie players are going to open up a door and be like, huh, surely the one power switch means that I've just fully turned on the power. Okay, that's cool. Only only took like two doors. Oh, what's this? Some kind of door to a catwalk. It's free. I guess I'll just run over there. Oh, there's a few zombies coming. What the hell's this going on? Whoa. Like, for the casual experience, it's just not very fun. And not every map has to appeal to casuals, but it has to have a nice balance. Most players are going to go on this catwalk and, like I'm about to, they're just going to die, dude. Like, it just is what it is. 
I died on purpose. I swear I know how the system works. I'm just showcasing. I'm not coping. You are. But yeah, it's just, it's a bit of a disappointment. There are some pretty cool things, like if you shoot the uh, the Brutus, when, when you get all the way to the end of the thing, he'll actually spawn in, which means that you can get the shield part early. But like, yeah, you just get bombarded with different zombie types, hellhounds and stuff. Imagine waiting so, so long just to have this as a map after the huge Black Ops 4 Zombies press conference and stuff. It's just, ugh, it's just tragic really, isn't it? Now, a lot of you are going to be surprised with this, but I'm actually putting Transit as the number 29 spot. And the main reason for that is the Richtofen Easter egg can actually be done solo. This wasn't found out until very recently, like I want to say 2021, which if you think about when the map released in 2012, kind of revolutionary. I understand it's incredibly difficult and you need to get EMPs and a bunch of max ammos and get this like RNG teleport hop thing. But still, at least it can be done solo, unlike majority of the maps on BO1 and BO2. So already that's a W for transit, but there are a lot of L's. Like this map is much more fun if you play with friends. But personally, once you start to play the map more and more and you understand the gimmicks and tricks that you can do, like using the teleporters, for example, most players will just get on the bus and assume that's the only way to get around the map. But not only is there teleporters, you can also hold out the turbine and while you're sprinting, you run much faster. Little tricks like that make this map much more bearable, as well as, you know, if you're on plutonium, turning off the fog. It just makes it so much better because look, oh my God, I can actually see what I'm doing. And if you knife twice while holding out the turbine, you can insta kill the denizens almost. Things like this really just, it fixes some of the issues with transit, but I'm not gonna say it fixes it entirely because it just does not. The map has a lot of missed potential and that's why it is so low on this list. Now the number 28 slot, we're actually gonna have Outbreak. Unfortunately, I can't play it because as you can see, you need to have the multiplayer installed and I can't be asked to wait like another 20 minutes just for that to happen. If you haven't played Outbreak, you're not really missing out on much. It was extremely popular with like bridging the gap between multiplayer players and zombies players. So it did that extremely well. It's the most played zombies mode of all time. Like the most amount of people on a zombie thing at once, which is incredibly impressive. And Modern Warfare 3 Zombies is going to be similar in a way to it. But personally, I just didn't really enjoy it very much. However, I put it like this high on the list and not right down at the bottom, just because you have a bit more freedom to sort of do what you want. There are a lot of different maps, even though they are like mostly multiplayer stuff. And you've also got the different modes, which I can appreciate, like Outbreak Survival, Outbreak Collapse. Like there were a lot of unique sort of ways that you can enjoy this mode, despite it being an almost open world experience. But at number 27, we have Firebase Z, or I guess if you're British, it's Firebase Z. I think the Cold War gameplay system is what really carried this entire game because they definitely focused more on making sure that the game feels fun to play than they did actually making the maps unique themselves. Because I'll be honest, the maps are kind of meh. And good God, the optimization is just terrible. I've got to try and find a way to... Why is my VRAM usage... What is going on, dude? Why is it so high? Wow, I can actually kind of play the game now, but it's still only at 80 frames. But yeah, the gameplay system really carried this. Firebase is by far the most generic, boring map in the entire game. But it does everything fine, you know, it gets the job done. If you want to just get on zombies and enjoy what you're doing, then it's a decent map for that. The Easter egg is pretty mid. The mimic step bugs for a lot of people. I've never personally had issues with it, but at the same time, I know of a lot of people who have, so it doesn't justify it. All the Cold War Easter eggs were incredibly easy. I mean, the boss fight, the order boss fight is so damn easy. Like you can literally do it in uh, two minutes. Pretty much no chance that you go down on it as well. But yeah, that's Firebase Z. And then on the next spot, we have Forsaken. I put it a little bit higher than Firebase Z, mainly because of the side quests that you can do in this map, as well as the unique starting room, which like you can actually just progress through the rounds by existing. You don't even have to do anything like, look, it's round one right now. It's about to turn to round two in like a few seconds almost. Yep, there we go. Round two, like it didn't even do anything. I killed one zombie, you know? But the fact that you can just go and play Nectar and Toten in the map using one of the like arcade machines is really cool. The Wonder Weapon, the Chrysalax, is frankly I think the best Wonder Weapon aesthetically and just gameplay wise on this entire game. And the Easter egg, you know, for a final Cold War map it was pretty easy but the boss fight's okay. It's not like 
super simple, but it's definitely not difficult. But yeah, Forsaken just has a bit more going for it, like aesthetically and just in general, than Firebase Z does for me. At the number 25 spot though, I have Shino Numa from Vanguard Zombies, definitely the best iteration of Shino Numa, without a doubt. And this map's actually round based, unlike most of this game. And it has a pretty good easter egg, to be honest, like it's not bad at all. The Wonder Wolf isn't terrible, the box is just right there, which is nice. And yeah, it was a great improvement from everything prior to what happened in Vanguard Zombies. Like I said before, I genuinely think the Vanguard Zombies gameplay system itself, like the actual shooting of guns and the using weapons and everything, is pretty enjoyable. I'm not a fan of the shooting zombies at, at all. Like, I think that frankly almost ruins the experience, which is why I can't put this any higher than the 25th spot. The voice acting from Seraxis is just illegally bad. Like, I don't understand how she got a job. And yeah, I just think that it's kind of crazy. This is the best map that we've had from all of COD Zombies in the last three years now, pretty much. Or I suppose two and, a, two and a half, two years, I don't know, whenever Forsaken came out. I'm definitely going to make more content on this map because it's not bad at all, but yeah. Moving on, at the number 24 spot we have Doris from World of War. Primarily because it has the Pack-A-Punch system, which I just, I, I like, you know, it's nice. I put it higher than Shino, Numa, and Nactar and Toten because getting to round 1000, I know you can't do it on Doris because it increases the zombies per round. But I think the overall gameplay loop heavily outweighs that for me. The map with the very first easter egg of course, with the Samantha like hide and seek thingy, which is pretty cool. The first map with the Packet Punch machine of course. And yeah, there's just a lot more that you can do on this map than say any of the previous maps on this game. However, I still put one of them higher and you're not going to see that for a little bit yet. I'll give my reasoning later on, but yeah, there is a map on this game which I strongly think is better than the rest. Next up we have the giant. I mean, it's very, very similar to Doris, really nothing changes, except it's on a better game overall. Aesthetically, it looks so much better because saturation exists, wow. You get the Annihilators, you actually get a reward from doing the Samantha hide and seek thing. And getting high rounds on this map is actually possible, unlike World at War Doris. I mean, it's definitely not impossible on World at War Doris, but it's certainly not fun and it's going to take a lot longer and... There are just so many glitches and bugs on World of War in general, like the fact that Wonder Wolf can literally just take your jug away from you. So yeah, I definitely put this map higher, but there's not really much else to say because yeah, it's just a very sort of fun survival experience that you jump into and you can just have fun. At number 22, we have the absolute masterpiece, which is five. And you know, I'm not even going to load into the game because frankly, this cutscene is just, it's everything. I'm kidding though, obviously we're going to load into the game. I put this at number 21. I put Kino de Toten at number 34. Literally, this map is just so much more enjoyable to me because at least the devs tried to do something a little bit unique and different. You've got the first ever mini boss zombie, which is the Pentagon Thief, because I wouldn't really count the Nova Crawlers. They're kind of just like an additional type of zombie. But this is an actual like mini boss. He steals your gun. The amount of panic that he induces is ridiculous. You have the most iconic cast and crew. The Winter's Howl, at least it's a unique wonder weapon. I understand that it's not very good. And that's why I put a certain map above this, because it fixes that issue for me. Nova Crawlers aren't too bad to deal with because I think then they only spawn underground. You can't get them if you're just training around in the Pentagon middle bit. I could be totally wrong about that if I am, you know, crucify me in the comment section. I'm perfectly fine with that. But yeah, this map just has a lot of unique features on Black Ops 1. You know, to say this game came out in 2010. It was really ambitious. It tried to uh, be pretty unique. Some people didn't like it because they found it quite difficult. And you know, if you did find it too hard, you'd just go over to Kino de Toten and play that instead. So it was nice because you had that option, you know, for the hardcore fans that wanted to challenge themselves, you'd jump on five. For the standard casual players that just wanted to have a little bit of like a normie zombies experience, you'd go on Kino. So yeah, that's five. Speaking of maps named after numbers, we have at the number 21 spot sitting dead center is the map nine. I guess because it's dead center, it's almost implying that I'm putting it as mid tier, but I really enjoy this map. I like the challenge system. I think, it, you know, I'm glad that it's a nice bright map actually set in the daytime for once, which is cool like the bright sunny day as well. You can claim challenges, which basically just give you free packet punched weapons and stuff and perks and stuff, which is awesome. And yeah, it's definitely one of the easier maps on Black Ops 4, which I can appreciate because I can't say the same for a lot of Black Ops 4 zombies maps. But boom, there we go. Pick up the, uh, the reward. Don't even know what it is, but nice. Get six equipment kills. 
and then you just carry on like this. It's cool. The tigers are a pretty unique, like, addition to this map. I'm, I appreciate them. Basically hellhounds, but just reskinned. Getting packet punch is nice and simple because all you have to do is just interact with the gongs around the map. The gladiators are pretty cool. I mean, just the way the map functions, like actually turning on the packet punch, like going up to all the gongs, it spawns in a special zombie, which is cool. You have to like prove yourself by being able to defeat them. So look, look, Bozo up here is going to try and kill me. Hey, come on, buddy. And then he gets absolutely demolished, of course, because I'm just a pro. Pick up the little part, and then that's one of four done for the Packet Punch. The perks are nice and easy to get, because quite literally, it's just right here. Same goes for that perk over there. You just open, like, one door. There you go. Next perk. Etc, etc. It's just, it's a breath of fresh air. It definitely feels more like a Black Ops 3 Zombies map, and that's why I'm so excited for when it's going to be released as a remake on BO3, thanks to a custom mapper. So yeah, when that comes out, I'm going to be definitely playing that, that's for sure. The Easter egg's pretty cool. The boss fight is kind of hard. And look, there we go. We've got a pack of punched pistol. Just, just like that, dude. Nice and easy. I wish I'd have known that for when I was doing the starting room challenge because it would have definitely helped. Oh my god. Jesus. Oh no, it wasn't the starting room, was it? It was the uh, get hit once and you die because really realistic mode. But yeah, that's pretty much it for nine. Now, to be honest, I could probably interchange 9 and tag the Toten, but I personally put it a little bit higher just because... Look at this, man. I mean, you instantly spawn and this is what you see. It's just absolutely stunning. I love this map for the aesthetics. It's gorgeous. Probably the prettiest map on all of COD Zombies. And once you understand how the whole systems work and actually being able to go over there to get power on and stuff, like 9, it's a very simple experience on BO4, definitely one of the better maps. However, I just think that it was a little bit of a letdown for the Wonder Weapons. The Tundra Gun and what is it, the Wonder Wolf Sniper, they just ended up being worse versions of the originals and you can just get the Thunder Gun anyway on this map, so why would you ever get the Tundra Gun? The Easter Egg ending was kind of cool, but eh, I mean it was a little bit of a disappointment. I like the final boss, if you can call it a boss, it's more just like a circle moving and you have to follow it. But it's one of the hardest quote unquote boss fights ever, and it should be as the last Ether story map. But it left a lot to be desired, and that's mainly because Black Ops 4 in general was just a rushed zombies game, unfortunately. I mean, notice how basically every single Ether story was a remake of an existing map because they just were only playing on nostalgia and they didn't get around to the actual fun, unique concepts which were going to be in the second year of DLC, which just never came out. But Tactotone is a pretty good map. However, I wouldn't say it's better than Call of the Dead, obviously, because that is, uh... Much higher up on this list, actually. Jumping back into Black Ops 2, we have Nuketown Zombies. Now, I know this is a lot higher than what most people would place this map, especially with how the perk system is, but I, for one, absolutely love this map as a survival sort of challenge experience because you can hop onto it and just sort of have fun for like 20, 30 minutes. It's got a unique perk system. The Packer Punch doesn't just drop straight away, which I can appreciate because if you think about it, like, zombies can be incredibly easy. It's so fast to set up. On Nuketown, you might not even get Packer Punch until round 20, which some people think that's a bad thing. I think it's good because it means it, it sort of trains you to play better, to learn a little bit of patience and try and figure out ways to survive until then. I mean, with how broken Double Tap 2.0 is, you're bound to get one of them first. And it's not like we're talking round 30 plus, it's round 20, you know? Guns are still going to be useful. And you can really build up a lot of points on this map because you have nothing to spend it on until you actually get the thing that you want dropping from the sky. And additionally, you've got this room in here, which obviously I can't open because it's 3,000 points, but behind there are the Galvan Knuckles, and then you've got an AK, Semtexes, a Bowie knife, Claymores, you know, you've got a lot of variety for such a small little experience. I also rate this higher than most just because I've had a lot of good personal experiences relating to my YouTube channel and stuff while playing this map because some of my best videos have been on Nuketown. So I've got to give it some love. So I understand if you wouldn't put it as high as I would, but I really enjoy Nuketown. I'm a big advocate of survival maps in general. And yeah, that's why it is at number 19. At number 17, we have Ascension. I know this is a very, very simple map and obviously a lot of people aren't a huge fan of that. At the same time, some people are a fan of how basic it is. But for me, it's just one of the best bare bones maps to play because it added PhD and stamina up. And it is one of the maps where PhD actually exists. So using things like the Mustang and Sally is actually quite fun. And it's why I would definitely choose to play the Black Ops 1 version of Ascension than the Zombies Chronicles version because, yeah, the fact it doesn't have PhD, it just kind of ruins the experience for me. Even though I understand that Widow's Wine is a great perk, 
It has the very first main Easter egg. I don't think you can do it solo, sadly, but it's nice that it exists in general. And we're talking an actual, like, main quest. Speaking of PhD, hey, what's up, my boy? This is, like, the peak of Black Ops 1 for me. The gameplay mechanics, the Thunder Gun, of course, returning. High rounds are actually kind of fun on this map compared to most of the other BO1 maps. If not all of them, I mean, yeah, this is probably the best map to go for high rounds on, actually. So yeah, that is why I have it at the number 18 spot. Next up, we have Classified. Now, I actually personally think that the 5 crew is much better. You can't go wrong with the Ultimus crew, of course, but this map fixed a lot of the issues that 5 had for me. Like, the Winter's Howl is buffed in this, and it's much, much better. You can get it for free as well. Like, there's a bunch of side quests that you can do. It has a main Easter egg, which unfortunately you have to go to, like, round 150 to actually complete, which is a bit of a joke, but at least it exists. It's better than going all the way to that round and getting pretty much nothing except for bragging rights, I suppose. You can actually build a shield, which is just revolutionary because the shield frankly fixes so many issues. Like, the shield is seriously so, so good. The Pack-a-Punch is in Area 51, which I find really interesting. It sort of makes sense thematically with the map. You know, we're at the Pentagon right now. So linking it to Area 51, we're sort of linking it with Moon almost. And training up in the center area downstairs is actually kind of fun to do. I'd say Classified is the best map if you're going for like the Dark Aether or whatever it's called, Dark Matter Camo on this game. It's definitely the best map to do so on. And yeah, to be honest, I don't have many faults for 5 other than the fact that, you know, it's the BO4 HUD, BO4 systems, BO4 perks. The BO4 mystery box kind of sucks because most of the guns aren't actually that amazing. But yeah, it's a nice fun little pastime. The fact you can get multiple ray guns at once is also quite nice. And yeah, on to the next map. Verrupt is without a doubt the best World at War Zombies map for me. Absolute classic here. Listen to this. The wee creepy dude. But the reason that I put this at the number 16 spot is atmospherically, there has been no map quite like Verrucked. I mean, if you're playing co op, you literally get split up with your teammates because you have two separate spawn rooms. It's set in a mental asylum, which is already enough to like give you a creepy vibe. We've got Juggernog right here. For such a small map, it's really quite fun. And of course, the highlight of this is the Super Sprinters, which some people hate because obviously, you know, it's uh, quite terrifying to deal with. But I love them because it's the most horror that COD Zombies has ever been. Zetsubo no Shima has some cool features that make it like horror-esque, but the Rook just really gets under your skin. It's quite creepy. And for a map that came out in like 2008, I'm not going to lie, you know, they did a really good job with, with the sun and like the way that the lighting of the map is. It's pretty nice. It actually added in the perk system, so unlike Nectar and Totem, you actually have some way of increasing your survivability. I understand there isn't a Pack-a-Punch in this, but you can still get to a high round using the Flamethrower. I wouldn't say it's necessarily too fun, but Verrucked is this high up because of the themes that the map like really excels in. It's pretty much the height of old zombies. Next up we have D-Machine, which just all around it's a very fun map to play. You've got a nice open area to go to high rounds here if you want to train in the spawn. You get armor system, which is really nice. Unlike Black Ops 4, Juggernog actually exists, which is cool. Everything is sort of viable for high rounds. Like, you can use any weapon. You can use equipment. Grenades are OP. Anything explosive. So it's not like the explosive weapons are just going to suddenly, like, get outscaled. Also, I just want to clarify, the reason that I am only level 1 right now is I just bought the game on Steam because I wanted to get the achievements. And yeah, it's definitely the best iteration of Nectar and Totem. I really like the spawn and like the graffiti on the walls. It looks really cool. The salvage system is pretty good. You've got like, you know, the Casimirs, which are just the Gersh devices. You've got Semtexes are broken. All of these like support kill streaks basically in zombies, which is such a cool idea. The Easter egg, it's sort of like it slightly holds your hand, but not that much. It doesn't hold your hand as hard as like World War II zombies, the very first map does. But the boss fight thing at the end is definitely not, like, super difficult or anything. It's fairly easy, as long as you just don't walk into the uh, giant electric, like, lightning thingies. And the X-filling system just gives you more reason to replay the game. So replayability. Because you have a lot of things to work for. You've got the tiers of the perks and the weapons and, the, like, you've got the skills. The entire crystal system was really cool. It just, it disappointed me because once you fully max out all of your skills, you have literally nothing to go for afterwards. So X-filling is almost pointless except for the extra XP, I guess. But once you have everything unlocked, why do you care about levels that much anyway, you know? So it would have been nice if there was a way to like, I don't know, have some kind of almost supply drop system where you can use the crystals to like 
open up things and get a chance at a rare weapon. Like, no one cares if there's RNG with, like, cool hidden weapons behind supply drops if it's PvE. The main reason supply drops were hated in PvP was because you're playing against other players. And having a gun that's just really, really meta compared to everything else that you can only get from supply drops is just an unfair advantage. But in zombies, it's like, well, you, you, you can keep playing as much as you want. You can keep, as long as you're a good zombies player, you're going to be good. Next up, we have Mauer de Toten. Now, I'm not a huge fan of the way, like, you know, the map is set in a very generic Nazi facility kind of thing. The setting of the map could be a lot better, but the reason I put this above every other Cold War Zombies map is the Easter egg is just absolutely amazing. The Valentina boss fight is up there with some of the best in all of Zombies history. Definitely not easy if you don't know exactly like the quirks and mechanics of how she works. You will just totally get one shot by her. Klaus makes it extremely enjoyable because he's just a nice little bit of a uh, light-hearted humor. Same goes for the Cerberus Wonder Weapon, which can actually talk to you using like the voices of some of the characters you hear in previous maps. And it is just the best map to enjoy the Cold War gameplay system on. At number 13, we have Moon, specifically the Zombies Chronicles Black Ops 3 version, because it literally fixes all of the issues that I had with the original Moon on Black Ops 1. If it was the original one, I'd put it much lower, but it completely alleviates the RNG factor, which is random number generator, so the things that you just have no control over, basically, thanks to the use of gobble gums. Plus, I really like the spawn room. It's a nice challenge, you know, the fact that it's uh, power's already turned on, you can pack a punch immediately. The round doesn't progress. The zombies progressively get stronger, though, so it creates a nice little challenge that you can go for, you know? In terms of the actual map itself, I mean, you're literally on the moon. Is there really much more to say? The Easter egg, the ending, of course, blowing up the earth is just like one of the coolest things in Call of Duty, in fact, in gaming history itself. It goes down as one of the most iconic moments ever. The presence of the astronaut's kind of cool. He's not an OP mini boss or anything. And the fact it has like, you know, Treyarch employee names on the top is pretty cool. The wave gun is frankly just the thunder gun, but even cooler and better because it's statistically the same with the wave gun aspect, but the zap guns, the fact that you can split the weapon in two, you know, it's a really, really unique concept. You can actually do the Easter egg on solo on Bleo 3 because you always spawn in as Richtofen and you need to be Richtofen to be able to do the Easter egg. So yeah, that's why I put Moon at the number 13 spot. At the number 12 spot, we have Buried. There's a lot of quirks to this map that I really like, you know, the drawing thing where it gets you a thousand points is very nice. The amount of buildables really add to the replay value because you've just got so many different ways you can, like, play the game. You can use a turbine and a subsurface redonator, sit here and just let them explode the zombies. You've got the mystery box right here you can spin off the bat. The Paralyzer is one of the best wonder weapons of all time. Of course, I get a DSR-50 though, like just classic. Leroy is one of the best, like, AI in all of COD Zombies history. One of the best additions, anyway. You can use him to do so much. You can use him to open up doors. You can use him to lock the mystery box so you never get a teddy bear. He can hold a crawler for you. You know, it's brilliant. The Raygun Mark II was introduced on this map. Like, there's so many iconic things that just happened because of Buried. And it's not like, oh, Nectar and Toten, where it's the first map ever and it doesn't really hold up to this day because Buried is still fun to this day. Only thing I will say, though, is getting high rounds is a little bit boring. Like, you get the Paralyzer and you just sort of sit on top of there, don't open that barrier, and patiently wait to get round 100. It takes ages, bro, because the Paralyzer starts killing very slowly. It's nice it has unlimited ammo, but ugh. At number 11, we've got Revelations. One of the most fun round 100s for sure, because you've got the Apothecan Servant, which you can actually upgrade in this map. And then you've got the Thunder Gun as well. And BO3, you know, you've got Deadwire systems and stuff. I don't know why you'd be using Deadwire compared to like just using the Apothecan Servant, but still. One of the single best skyboxes in COD Zombies history. Probably the best, actually. I mean, the blue contrasting the red is just, oh, it's just so beautiful, man. It really is. The Easter egg has two boss fights, not just one, but two. It mishmashes every single map together, so already it's like got that nostalgic feeling. The replay value is pretty high because there are a lot of fun features just in the map. The pack punch system is fairly easy, the power system is fairly easy because there's no power switch, you just 
activate corruption engines. And the only reason that I wouldn't put it any higher is mainly because the um some of the Easter egg steps are a bit of a joke. I mean, it took the zombies community, I think, five days to actually find this Easter egg completely, which is just ridiculous because it took most YouTubers like a couple days combined to actually figure out Easter eggs on previous BO3 maps. This one took like double, more than double. And yeah, like just trying to find random rocks outside the map, like this one back here that you have to shoot and then, oh, there it is. And then you shoot it like, come on, dude. Even the upgrade for the Apothecan Servant is shooting these random blue rocks into the sky. Like, come on. So we finally reached for top 10 and I would put Zetsubo no Shima as my number 10 spot. I think this map deserves a lot more love because the Skull of Nan Sopra is my favorite wonder weapon of all time. The setting is just really, really cool. It's like misty swamp, but it doesn't look disgusting. Like the fog isn't unbearable like some zombies maps, Cough Cough Transit. Again, it has two boss fights. Admittedly, the final one is fairly easy and the spider one as well. But this map has some creepy vibes. The challenge system is like basically most of the Easter egg. The plant system is a unique way to do things. And yeah, it's just not one of those maps that you can really play back to back like a billion times, but Every once in a while, this map aged like fine wine for me, and I find myself enjoying it every single time I play it, so that is why it's number 10. At number 9, we have Ancient Evil, which is just an absolute masterpiece. By far one of the most underrated maps. The Black Ops 4 Zombies Chaos maps were extremely fun and good, to be honest. They were like the best part of Black Ops 4. The entire aesthetic of the map is awesome because it's just like, you know, ancient Greek mythology. Can't really go wrong, to be honest. But the way the challenge system works is extremely nice. The Wonder Weapons are all very easy to get. You can just get the standard hands extremely quick, and then to actually upgrade them, you get to upgrade them twice. You don't even have to take them all the way if you don't want to, because the first upgrade is probably enough to get to high rounds. And then the main Easter egg, well, that's just a masterpiece as well, isn't it? The Pegasus boss fight contrasted with the zombie gladiator dude that you have to fight as well is just so cool. It's essentially the Dorizon Drak of this game, you know, with the whole four wonder weapon system. But if you haven't played this map yourself, I strongly suggest checking it out because you are missing out. Hell, one of the steps to upgrading the wonder weapon is literally like proving yourself and getting an unlimited ammo version of the wonder weapon where you just spam it non-stop. It's hilarious. It's it's a really, really fun. You can tell the devs actually wanted to make fun the main focus for this map, which I can't say the same for like Alpha Omega, for example. Next up, we have Call of the Dead at that number eight spot. I think it's a pretty good place to put the map. Until the start of this year, I actually hadn't played Call of the Dead before ever, which I know it's sacrilegious. How could you put it so high on your list when you haven't even played it until this year? Well, that's just how much I enjoyed it. The whole George Romero presence just per permanently being around you is cool as hell. You have many ways to deal with him, like going into the water, which calms him down. The VR-11, you can shoot at him, which also calms him down. The fact this map has two wonder weapons, you've got the scavenger and the VR-11 is pretty neat. It's one of the only maps where you literally just cannot get to round 100 because of how long it takes. Because after a while, zombies has this thing where it will basically just reset back to round one. And because it takes so long to get to round 100 on this map, since there's no traps or anything, and the wonder weapons kind of stop one-shotting after like round 50, which, you know, that's a bit of a bummer and it's probably why I can't put it any higher, but for me, the Call of the Dead remaster on BO3 Zombies was what really pushed this for me, because if it wasn't for that, I would never have even tried this map, but the original on BO1 is also just as amazing. I'm a big fan of like snowy maps as well in general, so it is right up my alley. The fog can be a little bit annoying, but as you see right now, it does dissipate eventually. The Packer Punch system is fairly easy, like it'll just spawn around the map, like three different spots as well not just the one spot like on most maps which is nice it just takes the regular formula of zombies and flips it on its head and it's also the very first map to have a celebrity cast and crew which is awesome i mean it's got merle dixon from the walking dead in it for god's sake but yeah it'd be criminal if i didn't put this map in the top 10 if you haven't played this as well i also highly suggest that you give it a try and moving on at number seven we have garod Krovi. the reason i put this higher than zetsubo no shima is frankly because this map just has a little bit more replayability getting to round 100 is fairly difficult, but I kind of like the challenge. Like, there's no real place that you can train reliably. There is the shield room, of course, but it's not like the best training spot in the world. But it's definitely not bad. But I mean, it's set in Stalingrad. It was the first map to bring back the PPSH after World of War. It has a Mark III version of the ray gun. The Easter egg is extremely fun to do because it's essentially just challenge based, which I like. It's sort of very like 
not predictable, but you know exactly what's going to happen when you do the Easter egg, but it can happen in a slightly different order, which I like. Stuff like the bomb step, which is extremely stressful, the Valkyrie step, and just the fact that you've got so many different gobblegums you can use to make some of these challenges so much easier, so you actually have to sort of pick a loadout before you load into the map. I mean, Idolize makes the boss fight a little bit of a joke, to be honest, but it is one of the hardest boss fights in COD Zombies history. If you're not using Idolize or some extremely broken gobblegum, like, I don't know, near-death experience, for example. Especially if you don't bring a shield. Oh my god, I have done that so many times. For the love of god, please bring a shield with you into the boss fight. Make sure you have a fresh shield. And then of course we've got the Gauntlet of Siegfried, which, I mean, if you haven't seen already, the dragon aspect of this map is dope as hell. The Gauntlet is literally like this awesome thunder punch thing mixed with a dragon flamethrower. So, I mean, it's the closest we got to getting a flamethrower back in COD Zombies after World at War. Kind of a shame this map didn't just fully bring the flamethrower back, but at the same time, you know, I, I understand it. This next one is probably going to shock a lot of people, but if you've been watching my channel for a long time, you probably know what this is. Town Survival at rank 6. Now, I understand that you're probably confused, like, what? Getting round 100 is nearly impossible on this map. There's no main easter egg. There's no crazy wonder weapon. How can it be almost in your top 5? Well, the reason I have it 6th place is... It's the best smallest zombies map because it literally has everything you could possibly want. You've got the pack a punch literally staring at you in the face when you spawn in. You have pretty much every perk that you could want. There's stamina up, quick revive, double tap. If you're playing on co-op, you have tombstone as well, which, you know, we're not going to talk about tombstone, but speed cola, jug, and that's pretty much it because that's all you really need. You've got the Reagan and the Reagan Mark II in the box. There's only two box spawn locations. Sure, the fire zombies are a little bit annoying, but at the same time, if what you're looking for is is just like if you're in the mood to play cod zombies and you don't want to have to go through and do the whole setup of multiple different maps like sure origins is a masterpiece for example but do you really want to go through and do the entire like staff setup every single time you play or get in the mood to play zombies not really at least i don't because i don't have that level of energy every single time sometimes simple is better i mean look it's round two i've got three thousand points you've also got the galva knuckles which are awesome immediately go and spin this mystery box and the amazing thing is it allows you to use guns that you might not normally have been able to use in Black Ops 2 Zombies because you can just very easily access the box. You can pack a punch basically whatever gun you want. Of course you can do that on any map but I'm talking about like the fact that it's so easy to do means you can basically pack a punch every single weapon. Give them all a try you know. Some maps you're not gonna like pack a punch the M1216 on transit for example. And that's where the replayability comes in because you can really just do everything that you could possibly want in Zombies except for easter eggs and high rounds i suppose but yeah i think survival maps should definitely come back into cod zombies in general when black ops 2 released i'm 99 sure most of you will have played town survival more than you played transit at number five we have dead of the night this map really gets a bad rep for no reason essentially if i have a way to describe this map to someone that has never played it it's pretty much origins but compact into one sort of smaller experience it's like half the size of origins it's got that direct sort of map layout where it's got the main middle area and then you've got the place over there which you branch off to the place over there and then over there as well there are a lot of buildables and parts you have to pick up and it can be a little bit overwhelming on the very first attempt but at the same time it wasn't origins i mean if you consider the fact that each staff has five parts to it the three initial parts then you've got the disc and then you have the crystal so that's 20 parts for all four staffs not to mention the Max's drone or the shield. This map, however, only has nine on the top right and then eight on the bottom right here. And obviously there are probably some additional ones for like for the main Easter egg, for example. But it doesn't make sense to me when people pretty much just like dick on this map because it has too many parts. Because if it really has too many parts, then how do you find Origins enjoyable? Because frankly, Origins is extremely overwhelming for like a really casual player or a good player in general, because this isn't a casual tier list by any means. I mean, Dead of the Night, it's not exactly something you can just jump into and immediately have fun if you don't know what you're doing, but then again, so is everything on BO4. The main reason I have it so high as well is also because, like, thematically, I'm a massive fan of, like, vampires, were 
werewolves, all the gothic shit. The only thing I'm not really a fan of is the cast and crew. I mean, I love Brian Blessed, but I'm just not a fan of his character. The Wonder Weapon on this map is one of the highlights, probably the single best thing from this map, actually. Because like Ancient Evil, not only does it have one upgrade, it has two upgrades, and it's really not difficult to get either. If we go all the way into the back here, but boom, here it is, the Wonder Weapon. It's just casually here. And to get this, you have to go around the map and look for these four colored symbols, which to be honest, fairly easy to do once you know where the symbols are. They all have like, I think they have four spots each. So that's where it's like outside of the part thing. Yeah, you've got multiple different spawns, but at the same time, like shield parts have three different spawns on Origins. The Maxis drone parts have three different parts on Origins as well. The fire discs have different spawns, but to get it initially, it's pretty easy. And then once you do get it, to actually upgrade it isn't too hard either. You just have to like... I'm pretty sure you kill a werewolf and then you have to fuse two different parts with like ores and stuff in the observatory area. And then to do the final upgrade, it's a little bit more complicated, but you don't even need to do that. And once you do get the actual wonder weapon upgraded, it is extremely good for getting high rounds. And it's one of the aesthetically best wonder weapons that is in the entire franchise, to be honest. It has really cool animations where it sort of sucks for zombies into the floor for one of them. It disintegrates them for another. And I've gone round 100 multiple times on this map just because of how fun the round 100 actually is. I mean, if you consider it fun sitting in a corner and shooting down on the floor, you essentially come all the way to the back over here and you crouch down or just stand here, shoot on the floor with the Alistair's Folly and that's the high round strategy. But at the same time, every single map in Black Ops 4, the high round strat is going for like camping strats, which is a bit of a shame, but still, I think the aesthetics of the Wonder Weapon are enough to make it worthwhile. It's definitely the best high round map on the entire game to be honest. And yeah, definitely give Dead of the Night some love because I absolutely adore it. My favorite map on BO4 by a long shot. At the number four spot, we have Mob of the Dead. Probably one of my favorite cast and crew outside of like the main four, obviously Richtoff and Dempsey, Takio, Nikolai. It's a little bit broken on solo because you get three self revives instantly and then you get another one every single round. So it can be a little bit easy as a map, but at the same time, Brutus is a nice change for a boss because he's not terribly difficult to deal with, but he's also like, he's a looming presence, you know? The main Easter egg, I really like it because sure it's a little bit linear, you know, you get all the parts for the plane and that is essentially the easter egg because you just have to go to the bridge three times but the way this map flows everything links together this is probably one of the first easter eggs that you completed the entire story of this map is what makes it such a masterpiece because when you play it you really feel like you are in this gritty alcatraz prison playing as these characters and you want to genuinely help them out you want to save them the intro cutscene i just have to say is the single best out of any zombies map for me that was like the height of zombies like literally i'm pretty sure when I first got into zombies, I rewatched that cutscene so many times. The fact you actually get to see the guard come back to life as a zombie, you don't really see many humans turn into zombies in COD Zombies, which is quite weird for me. Because as a zombie trope, you know, that's kind of like the main aspect of it. But power is fairly easy to like deal with. The mystery box, of course, we have the legendary Blundergat, which has four variants technically. You can use the regular Blundergat, you can use the Packer Punched Blundergat, which for Sweeper is amazing. You can get the Acid Gat, or you can get the Packer Punched Acid Gat. All four are pretty reliable reliable wonder weapons. The sweeper especially, just for standard blunder get packet punched, is extremely underrated. This cafeteria is one of the best training spots for learning the game. Oh, and we actually got the blunder get from the box as well. Let's go. Second hit. Damn, if I wasn't doing this video, I would totally just like bang out a mob game right now. But yeah, it's just, it's so much fun, man. The only downside I will say is it can be a little bit of a drag going for high rounds because the strategy, I think, like once you get past a certain round is you use this acid trap and that's literally all you do. You just run around, wait for it to come back and that's kind of it. But at the same time, most high rounds before like Mob of the Dead were similar strategies. You just use traps over and over again, which is why I was a big fan of when like wonder weapons would start being so good that you can use them past a certain round. But when Mob of the Dead remastered comes out on Black Ops 3 Custom Zombies, it'll 100% be doable to go for around 100. Just 
just because it's going to be on BO3. Which is why it was such a shame it wasn't in Zombies Chronicles as like one of the most iconic maps of all time, of course. But yeah, that's my solid number four spot. At number three, I'm putting Shadows of Evil. Frankly, the worst part about this map is just the fact you've got to go through the bloody Jessica Rose part of the intro cutscene every time you load up the map. I think the beast system, you know, it's very similar to the afterlife system, of course, from Mob of the Dead. However, I think it was done better in this map. I don't know if that's controversial or not, but I think, especially on solo, it is a bit too overpowered. Hello, can we zap? There we go. The way the system works on this map is a lot better because it's sort of, it does flow in the map the same way that it flows in Mob of the Dead as well for turning on the power and stuff, but you don't just get an afterlife as soon as you go down. You still have to be a little bit smart and buy quick revives. The main Easter egg, it's kind of a shame that it can't be done solo, and I know you can go all the way to the Shadow Man boss fight, but you can't do the very last step, bro. Like, come on, the last one? You couldn't just code in a way for us to do it on solo, like every other map on BO3, but this map has so many small Easter eggs. I mean, you've got a free gobblegum Easter egg, which you can do on this little plate thing here. There's hundreds of different ciphers. I mean, probably not hundreds, but you know, there's a very, like a huge amount. You've got little tips and tricks, like this little piece of paper over here. If you charge up a grenade, hold it, and then throw it, you can pick this up, get 500 extra points. Like the plant system is essentially just for digging sites from Origins, but kind of a little bit better because you wait for it to get purple, like the more it progresses, the better rewards you get. The only reason I don't put it any higher is because one, you can't upgrade the Wonder Weapon, but to be fair, the Wonder Weapon is one of the best we've ever had. In fact, no, it is the single best Wonder Weapon of all time. Statistically, the Apothecary Servant is just OP. I mean, it's a literal black hole gun, which is just broken. I really like the ritual system because to get Pack-a-Punch, it's not too difficult. You just do four rituals and then Pack-a-Punch is open pretty much. Well, I guess you do five rituals, including the last one. The cast and crew is pretty cool. I really like the fact that Jeff Goldblum is in this map. And unlike some uh, random casts and crews, you know, he actually did a really good job of the character. And so did all of them, to be honest. It's essentially Mob of the Dead, but on the Black Ops 3 engine and kind of made to be a little bit more difficult, but not impossible. Like it's not difficult at all, to be honest, but I'm saying it's harder than Mob anyway. Both maps are relatively easy maps by and large. The sword, of course, the whole specialist system is really, really fun. And the upgrading of the sword, it's fairly easy to do. I mean, you literally just spawn in Mog and kill them, that's it. This map just keeps on getting better and better, and like Zetsubo no Shima in Age Like Fine Wine, most people put shadows in like their top five now. Getting high rounds is also fairly easy and fun to do as well because using the Apothecary Servant with like alchemical is just, it, it's enjoyable. Watching all the zombies just get sucked into the middle, it's pretty nice. And yeah, there's a lot of content on this map and that's why I put it at the number three spot. At the number two spot, of course, we have Origins. Especially on Black Ops 2, this map is just an absolute masterpiece. Most people consider this their number one. The only reason that I don't, and it's very simple, and it's because the Black Ops 3 version of Origins I'm just not a fan of. The fire staff skip that you can do for one of the easter egg steps is just not doable on BO3 Origins. Well, you can actually skip that step, but it's a little bit different. You have to have four players, like, all hold it at the same time kind of thing. So on solo, you cannot do it. Meaning the solo easter egg has a lot more RNG involved, which I'm not a fan of. But on BO2, you can actually just alleviate that, which I appreciate. Getting the staffs is just pretty easy to do, to be honest. It's also quite fun. I mean, you've got so many staffs you can go towards like boom like i've already got the ice disc and then we've got snow on round two meaning that we can essentially well we're looking for parts but you dig up and if you get lucky <laughs> there's a little bit of rng involved then you can get the ice staff parts we've got the giant robots which are just an amazing looming presence you have to go underneath their feet to order to be able to get the wind staff parts i just like how all the staff sort of link in with the gameplay of the map like to get the fire staff part you have to kill a panzer which no matter what will spawn on round eight which definitely makes this map a little bit difficult but at the same time not that difficult if you're a brand new player though the panzer is probably going to ream you a few times also i totally didn't just die or anything you you have no idea what you're on about but this map is extremely doable for high rounds the easter egg can actually be done solo which i'm pretty sure it's the first cod zombies map ever to be a doable solo and every map afterwards was as well, I'm pretty sure, except for Shadows of Evil, which weirdly is the very next map. The Easter egg is extremely iconic. It's not too long, and to be honest, the reason that it takes a while is just because of building all the staffs. Like, that is the main setup for the Easter egg, and then after that, you're kind of just into it. There's an absolute ton of fun to be had on Origins, and there's a reason why so many people praise it. It is, like, the most iconic zombies map at this point. However, it is not my absolute favorite of all time. There is one 
more on this list, and if you have a keen eye, you probably know what it is. But the number one spot for me has to be Der Eisendrach. It has the perfect mix of replayability, the ability to go to round 100, and the main easter egg. They're all just perfect. It's literally Origins, but it's on BO3, and it has a boss fight. I really, really like the bows. To be honest, I probably prefer the bows to the staffs. Also, the time of the map releasing was extremely influential to my life at the time. Like, I remember just wanting to come home and immediately play this map, and I'd play it for like seven hours straight and get continuous round 100 attempts in. Absolutely loved it to bits. It's extremely fun and unlike Origins the setup isn't super duper tedious sometimes like you can't really play Origins back to back to back to back and that's the main drawback for me because of how long the setup time actually takes whereas for the bows I mean to get like the lightning bow which is the best one for high rounds or the wolf bow also a very good option I mean they all are but it takes a lot less time it incorporates elements from mob of the dead as well with the dragon system because obviously you know the hellhounds and feeding them unlike mob of the dead though the hell's retriever is kind of ass whereas the bows you get are obviously extremely good the ragnarok dg4 buildable is pretty easy to get and like origins it sort of implements the gameplay into the actual easter egg and buildable itself everything that's in the map flows very very well like the rocket test facility you need for one of the ragnarok parts killing the panzer you get one of the ragnarok parts using the death ray you get one of the ragnarok parts like it's just that simple game design isn't crazy man all you have to do is just make it so that the gameplay and the elements you incorporate into the game itself just flow together. It creates a really enjoyable experience and that's why this map is for me the most replayable map on this entire list. It has that perfect balance of being able to do everything multiple times and it not get boring. It's the very first map to have a boss fight like a proper boss fight because I mean I wouldn't really count the Shadowman boss fight to be honest because it's so easy to beat. You use a death machine and it's just done. Whereas in the Derisendrock boss fight you have three stages and it's definitely not easy. I Either, but it makes you want to replay and try and beat it if you do fail at that first attempt. All the Easter egg steps are fairly doable. There's nothing like super difficult. The Wisp step is fine because if you actually understand how it works, then it's not too bad. Essentially for the Wisp step, you're supposed to not kill any zombies because I believe it reduces the timer that you have between being able to shoot the uh, the electric stuff. The Wisps even, I have <laughs> names. This is probably the first map that most people got round 100 on as well because it's definitely like, I mean, the Lightning Bow has since been nerfed, but it's still the easiest map I think to get it or one of. I mean, you just run alchemical, get the lightning bow, and you can pretty much camp anywhere and get to round 100. But now, I think it takes, like, a little bit more effort past round 80, or is it 70 when the lightning bow stops, like, fully one-shotting them? The panzer adds this level of difficulty, which is really refreshing for the map, because if the panzer wasn't on the map, then it would kind of be a bit too easy, to be honest. It's that nice fine line between Mob of the Dead and Origins. And the Easter egg ending, of course, we have to talk about it. Blowing up the moon, I mean, it's just so cool. Literally uses the same trope that moon does, except it's like an alternate universe and everything. And instead of blowing up the earth, we blow up the moon. Like, what are the ramifications of that? It would have been really cool if after you play the map and you beat the Easter egg, something crazy like, I don't know, well, what would happen if you blew up the moon? You know, the tides would go crazy. It'd be interesting if there was some kind of like water around here that did just like overflow and make the map really chaotic. Similar to how blowing up the earth in moon obviously creates transit, which makes it all super chaotic. It'd be nice if you got like random meteors dropping from the sky and stuff like rubble from the moon. But yeah, I really can't fault this map for much. It's super duper iconic. My personal favorite, I understand if you have a differing opinion, that's totally fine. Like all of these maps in the last like, you know, top 10, really, I enjoy every single one of them. Hell, in the last top 20, you know, there, there are only a few maps on this list that I'm just like, I really don't want to play this. And that's mainly the bottom 10. That's the thing about these ranking and tier list videos is when you do them, it's not about saying, oh, this map is objectively better than this map. It mainly comes down to personal preference. And at the same time, it's not like I'm judging bad things. It's like Tag to Toten for me is like a 70% enjoyment rate, whereas like Town Survival would be a 90% enjoyment rate. Derizendrak would be a 95 percent like there's no map that i would put above 95 percent because every single zombies map has you know something very tiny that you can critique about it but it's whether that negative thing it like overarchingly impacts the rest of the gameplay and it doesn't because if i had to pick a fault with this map i'd probably say like 
not having a widow's wine perk machine, but then again, it might be a little bit broken. Perhaps making the panzer spawn in on round eight again, because to be honest, like, I don't know why they changed it so they didn't spawn in on round eight, when BO3 is objectively just an easier game, because of the double swipe being gone, which I appreciate, because the double swipe is more just annoying than it is a challenge. Also, the fact that this map has dog rounds as well, that also makes it better for going for high rounds, because every, you know, 10 rounds or so, not every five, because unlike most dog maps, it has a longer wait time between each one, which I kind of appreciate because otherwise it'd be even easier. But yeah, similar to Shadows of Evil, there are a lot of side quests you can go for, like the plunger Easter egg, you've got a belt you can just ding casually. The mystery box is by no means obsolete, however, the bows are like the main focus, so I guess that would be it actually, is to add something in the mystery box. Maybe if the Reagan Mark II was on this map, it'd be even cooler. I don't know why it wasn't added to all of the DLC maps and only just the Chronicles ones, but yeah. I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. Please consider hitting that subscribe button. Only 11% of people who watch me are actually subscribed. You might like checking out this video on screen because YouTube recommends it to you. Hey, it might be worth giving it a try. And yeah, I guess I'll see you in my next video.